Hey everyone, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together. And uh, I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you guys can be a part of the whole process. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. So we are going to check out the or the blocks from last night, but we're going to, I think, continue on the clamshells block. And the clamshells block is the uh, one that we've been doing for the past few nights here. Here's the embroidery, and then we have these clamshells started, and I think we're going to just continue on that tonight. I just have a hankering to get things done, and these are some unfinished blocks. This is one of them that I just want to get out of my hair before moving on. So I will, I'll show you guys the new blocks. I wasn't here last night. That's when they were released. They were released on Thursday, uh, so we didn't get a, t a chance to look at them. And uh, so we'll do that and then do some stitching, some of these clamshells. So thank you again for joining me this Friday. Nice to see you all again. Hope you had a good Valentine's Day yesterday. All right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. All right, we are here. Okay, so this is what we're going to continue on tonight. And uh, we're gonna actually start appliquing. So I think, I think I might applique this section on first, just because we have it kind of marked. But then, then we have to prep the other rows. So there's four. There's a row of four, and then another row of three, and we have it all planned out already. We just have to make it. So I think we'll start with stitching, just to feel like we got a lot accomplished. <laughs> Uh, but then uh, we'll get going. But first, I wanted to share with you uh, the new blocks. So first off, I wanted to show you, I updated my block index here. So I made a photocopy of the uh, index of this. So this is in the back. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. In the back, there's the index of all the blocks. And I made a photocopy of that. And uh, I've marked off the ones that they've released already in the quilt long. And those are the ones that all have the little, the little um, dots on there. And then the, the highlighted ones I have completed. So, oh gosh, I didn't even count. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, so I have 28 completed and I'd like to add to that soon. Um, I, I want this clamshells to be 29. I did count how many haven't been released yet uh, and I think there's 38 unless I missed some. So 38 haven't been released and then all these ones with little dots on it I haven't started but have been released. So uh, I have a long way to go yet you guys but it's kind of nice having this little form for me. Let's just uh Let's check out what we got going on here. I printed on scrap paper. I printed on the back of that guy. Okay, so we got Grand's Legacy. This is one of the new ones for the week. And that's on page 93 by Nikki Turvo. Cute, cute. So that's a straight, oh, I was going to say it's a straight embroidery, but there is a cute, tiny little border on it, and that's awfully sweet. So that'll be kind of fun. Once we get to that guy, let's see, what else do we have? Some from further up front. Oh, is this on the list? I, I might have, this might be an old marker. <laughs> I think this is a marker from earlier because I think, didn't we do potted paisleys and a trip to the, we did a quilt, uh, the trip to the quilt shop. Was this one of the ones this week yet? Uh, let me know you guys. But uh, if it is, it's a potted paisleys by Amy Johnson. That's uh, on page 66. It must be, I, I have a marker for it. So, okay. The um, potted paisleys. Trip to the quilt shop we've done already, which is nice. Okay, here's another one. Twice as, twice as much by Shruti Dendekar. And uh, these are awfully pretty. So there's two colorways for this one. Oh, it is for this week. Okay, yeah, it's new. All right. <laughs> 
For some reason, it looked super familiar to me, and I thought it was released already, but you're right. Yep, Potted Paisley's is this week, and then twice as much. This one looks awfully sweet. I love how it gets just, it's the same design, but smaller and smaller and smaller. It's kind of fun. Okay, and then the last one is There's Always One by Jennifer Keltner. So I, I was almost tempted to do this one. It's a, it's some flying geese. That's what um, the quilt block is called when you have this kind of big triangle with the two triangle corners. Uh, and that, that is the, uh, that's a flying geese block basically. And here's one flipped upside down on, on accident on purpose, right? <laughs> there's always one. Like there's always something in a quilt that's goofy and you made a mistake on. So that's kind of honoring that idea of a quilt, which is just cute. I, I really like it. Uh, so this is a nice, uh, I was tempted to do this one, but oh man, I just want to get our clamshell one here done. So that, that one out for me tonight, it, it won out uh, <laughs> me trying to uh, get something done instead. So, all right, I wanted to start out with stitching what we have um, on here already. Uh, and then we do have to make these other rows. So let's just take a look at what we have here. So I have, I've cut up a postcard that I have and I, I actually have it drawn on. So here's my, my postcard and I've drawn the shape on. So this is from the, uh, there's a template in the book for this, the little clamshell. Clam shell. So I, I traced enough for all of them, but I think I will, you know, in theory gain a couple more by taking these out. Uh, but yeah, so you, you make the shape you want just something stiff. Uh, you can use a template as well to um, like template plastic or something, but I'm just using my postcard. It's just the right thickness and I, I just like it. And then we've cut, so I even have this, I have this note to myself, in order from left to right, top to bottom. So <laughs> like this, you know, left to right, top to bottom. So this is, these are my next, my next uh, little squares of fabric and they're in order because <laughs> I was picky enough to put them in order, right? Um, so you have your template and I am just going to glue that template just really just a dot in the middle to one of these pieces and I'll just cut around it so that I have like a quarter inch seam allowance. Kind of what I did here, you know, just doesn't have to be perfect and mine's a little sloppy but that's totally fine. And then I folded over the edge and glued it. And I have a little glue pen, but you can just use any sort of um, like a glue stick. And I just put a little bit of glue and then fold over the edge, a little bit of glue, fold over, a little bit of glue and fold over till I have those. Then after that, I had the three. I just put a little tack right uh, where they meet and they meet at, at like the point of, of these clamshells there. So I've put a small tack, just a little going around like twice with my thread. And then I'm just jumping to the next spot and going around twice with the thread again. So that's what's holding it together right now is just those two small little tacks. And now we are ready to applique this. So what I'm gonna do for that, some people like appliquing with the template still in there, but I don't, I don't especially like doing that. I want to take this um, paper, the postcard out of here, but I think I'm going to hit it with the iron one more time. I mean, it is pretty solid, it's in there, but you know, it's always nice to just make sure it's, <laughs> it's good to go here. So uh, while I wait for my, my uh, iron to warm up, I'm gonna grab from Zeb here, um, my little straw needle. So this is my size 11 straw needle. It is teeny tiny. Look how small that eye is. Uh, but that is what I'm going to applique this on with. And I'm also going to use just the same color thread I have in my sewing machine. You kind of want to match, match the thread to the applique piece. And uh, you know, it's close enough. This is going to extend across all my, all my fabrics will be this, this color here. So, all right, let's give this a nice little final press and uh, we'll, we'll take it, the templates out and st stitch this guy down. Oh, Jennifer, you're working on this block too. Nice. 
Just gonna get one nice final edge there. Okay, so I'm going to pop out those templates. I'm just gonna use my, my little stiletto here. I'm gonna first kind of release the glue. So I'm gonna just kind of go around the edge here and kind of scrape that glue out of the way. It really wants to hold down there. Typically, I don't wait forever <laughs> before doing the applique. So this glue has been in here for quite some time. Um, so it wants to stay stuck, but I think we got it now. There we go. There's our first template piece out. All right, let's get the next one. And then I'm gonna pin all these to uh, the background here. How long do your videos for Splend Sipper 2 stay on YouTube? They are, they're on there, Kathy. So I am not gonna take them down. So they will be there. Uh, they'll be there like as long as uh, the Splendid Sampler ladies let me and uh, however long YouTube exists, I suppose. So, uh, which means they'll be there for a long time. <laughs> uh, so don't, you don't have to worry about that. If anything, they will just be in a different spot. Like if we have new projects that we work on, those projects will probably go to the top. Um, but if you do a search for it, or if you just look on the, um, look in my project section, eventually this is down the line, in my project section, then it will, they'll, it'll live in there. So it'll, it'll live uh, forever here, <laughs> these videos up on YouTube. But for a long time, it, it'll still be on the main YouTube page. And the YouTube is Penguin and Fish Movies. All right, there we go. Got all of them out and we still have this nice edge. All right, so now I'm going to pin it to, uh, Pin it to my fabric here. So I'm I'm noticing, you can see I drew with blue line, you can just barely see it. It's kind of faded a little bit. Where the placement of these go. So this is this is based on um, the template that I traced originally. And it looks like it looks like these two end ones want to expand a little past my blue line. So I'm gonna try and mush them together a little bit so it hooks up with my line. So to start out, I'm gonna just pin this dude in the center. So I got my little applique pins here. These are just, uh, these are clover applique, pin, <laughs> applique pins, and they're just itty bitty pins, which works great. They work great for, for applique. You don't have long ends hanging out everywhere. I think that's kinda why they're good. Like if you compare this to, like compare this to this to one of my other pins here. See, so that's super long and I would have like the ends hanging out far and all my, my fabric would be stuck to it and all that. Oh, I could glue that. You're right, Jennifer. I could put a little bit of glue on this and I think I'm going to. Let me grab my, my glue pen. So Jennifer is like, I could use a bit of glue and she's totally right. So I'm actually might do this instead of the pins. Um, so I'm going to put a little dab of glue on the seam allowance here. I don't want to put it on this part because then it'll like stay stuck to the fabric. I want it kind of on this little outside bit because then my, then my uh, applique piece will still look like it's kind of floating on the top. Yes, yeah, stitch, stitch basing, basting is another option. Um, you know, I was never for this glue basting. I didn't like the idea of glue being on the quilt and that just seemed wrong and weird. Um, however, it has turned out for me to be one of the quickest and easiest ways to do this. So I do like, I do like thread basting. That's when you just stitch some big threads down to hold things in place. See right here, it doesn't want to go any further, but I think we'll just add a little bit more overlap in here. But I did a test for needle turn applique in the first Splendid Sampler and like a test between thread basting and pins 
and this glue basting. And for me, the glue basting just worked really well. It held in place just, to, just long enough for me to stitch everything down. And uh, I didn't have any pins in my way. It was just, it was just uh, easy and fast for me. So I kind of kind of stuck with the glue a little bit, which is a little surprising to me. I didn't, I didn't expect that. All right, I am going to put another pin in here just for, just to make sure it stays in place. Okay, one last one here. And then we'll just stitch around these guys to start out tonight. Ugh, I think it's supposed to get in the negative numbers again this weekend by us here. Negative degrees outside. All right, here we go. We did have a fun time last night, though. My husband and I went to a movie and out to eat, which we don't do very often, so that was really fun. And um, <laughs> Except for during our movie, it, it cut out for like 20 minutes or something. Maybe not quite 20 minutes, but... Um, <laughs> so people were not happy about that. But uh, we got some, we got free tickets to go see another movie. <laughs> so that was kind of a bonus. All right, so we're ready to stitch these down now. I'm gonna grab my needle here. Thread that, this is the tiniest eye. But I just love this needle for, for applique. All right, where is my scissors? Here we go. All right, so let's, I'm gonna just start with a little knot here. And I'm gonna start from one side and we will just, ooh, we'll just, Kind of go zoop, zoop, zoop on this. Oop, let's get back up. Oh, we went to Alita Battle Angel. So I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. It's it's the new Robert Rodriguez movie. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to trim it here, but I don't think it's going to get cut off. I'm going to start right here. And we went to it for a reason. So it's kind of like a, it's like a sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, but kind of in a light sort of way, not like a super dark, intense movie. I mean, you know, I don't know. That's debatable, I suppose, but it's not like super scary and dark and, and whatever. It's, um, it was fine. I mean, we, we went to it, but like, I mean, the visuals, the, 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 um, like world that, they lived in it was cool. Oh man, though, the script had so many problems. <laughs> That's my critique. The script had just so many problems. They didn't set things up and, uh, you know, things that people said were like, okay, well, I didn't, what motivated them saying that? We didn't hear about that at all at the beginning of this movie anywhere. And I don't know. Just silly things. But anyway, uh, we went to it for a particular reason. Uh, my husband, John, he went to South by Southwest last year. And that's a, that's a, that's a conference in, in Austin. And uh, it's like for movies and music and interactive and they have you know, speakers and classes and, and all that stuff. And then just fun stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so that's also where Robert Rodriguez's film studio is. He has his own like film company. And uh, when they, when John was there, they had like a party slash tour of, Kind of, kind of of the studio, but more so 
of the Alita, Alita, um, oh gosh, I totally forgot the last part of uh, Alita Battle, whatever, I forgot even what I, Battle Angel, Alita Bat Battle Angel, I forgot what they called her even. Um, anyway, so they basically had just got done shooting or something like that, and and they had the whole set there, and it was basically like they had built a whole city. Uh, and and uh, the whole set was like this completely built city. So my husband got to go there and see a ton of the props and like walk around this cool city that they had made for the movie. And that's where they shot it and everything too. So now that the movie's out, we're like, well, we got to go see that. Uh, so that was that was neat. So it was cool. He got to actually see where he was, but like in the movie. So that's why we that's why we went to that one. I mean, usually I do like a good sci-fi movie, but and you know, it had potential, but oh my god, there were so many script problems, which is just such a huge bummer. <laughs> like it's just silly things like somebody would be like, "Oh, well this looks like trouble." And it it'd be like as an audience is like, "Does it look like trouble?" There's nothing that set that up that this looks like trouble before. Or like, you know, there's something... She's like a... The main character is like a little cyborg person. Uh, and uh, the, the guy is like, you're more human. Or like, you, you're more human than a human. And it, it's like, oh, was that one of her concerns? That she didn't feel human enough? Like, that wasn't set up at all. So it's so, it's so stupid to have a line implying that that was one of our issues that the main character was trying to overcome. That wasn't... I didn't think that... I didn't know she had an issue with not feeling like she was a human or not. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just dumb. Like, it, it was just kind of from the basic kind of storytelling, script writing aspects. Nothing was foreshadowed to the next thing. So every everything anyone said was always awkward and weird and <laughs> not set up. So anyway, there you go. That's my critique for you. If you're planning on going seeing going to see Alita Battle Angel, you can let me know <laughs> if it, if you agree with me or not. But you know the graphics and all that were great. But without the story, I don't know. Graphics can be super good, and it's still gonna be meh. And I, I was, you know, so my husband does like movie stuff, and so we've analyzed and thought through movies. I've read books on, you know, movies and script writing, and I took, you know, classes in college for analyzing films and all that sort of stuff but he, yeah really like he just without the story I don't know why bother with the rest of it but I thought I, you know I kept thinking about it because it, it's it's stuck with me the like why was the story so just not coming together or whatever and then it occurred to me that oh that it was an ad adaptation of a comic book I think and so uh, today I was like, oh, they were just probably trying to fit in all these themes that they had to from the, from the comic book and just left us, the audience, behind. That's what I think happened. So like, oh, let's do it all for the people that actually know all this already and then let's leave everyone else in the lurch. I think that's kind of what happened. Or like, oh, we can't edit out these this idea and this idea and this idea because it was core to the comic book or something but by leaving those themes in it made a really disjointed story so anyway i think i think that if i had to guess that's where the problem lies it just wasn't fully adapted um for film uh like it needed another uh, another draft. <laughs> anyway, that's easy to say from someone who didn't actually work on it or, or write. <laughs> There's a lot of factors that go into stuff and, you know. 
anyway, it's real easy to critique something versus actually doing the work. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a fun outing, except for uh, that the the movie went out in the middle of it and like right through like a huge action uh, scene too, right? It just conked out. And uh, then we sat around for like 20 minutes before they got it going again. But like I said, we got some free tickets out of it. So that's nice. <laughs> So as an excuse to go watch another movie. <laughs> as fun. A lot of people were out at the movies last night. Yeah, it was a while. It was it was about 20 minutes. It was enough for everyone to kind of just settle in and get chit-chatting and you know, a, a few people had gone out right away, so we're like, okay, those people got it taken care of. They're telling, they're telling everyone, and we had time to analyze the script <laughs> and why it wasn't working uh, while we waited for it to come back on. <laughs> so I'm thinking, yeah, probably was around, probably was around 20 minutes. I had a friend in high school, or like junior high, and we would always, when we saw movies, we would do that too, just kind of analyze what was working and what wasn't. Oh, the roads were too bad to go out for you guys. Yeah, it was crazy when we, we were just about to go, like we were just leaving work, basically, and it had started snowing again, and we're like, what the heck, it's snowing again? And uh, it looked like it, it had the potential for getting pretty bad. But luckily it, it stopped after a while. But yeah, it looked like we had the potential. I mean, we definitely got a, like another inch or so, I would, I would say. But um, luckily, the two places we were going, we, we went to dinner um, and, and the movie. And both places, if, if we got stranded... Anywhere between the one place and the other place, the the restaurant and the movie, both places are are walkable enough uh, to our house. <laughs> so I I wore uh, long underwear and I had my my high boots on and stuff. I'm like I'm I'm good to go if we get stuck somewhere. <laughs> so so we kept kept on keeping on, I guess. So I'm making two just little stitches when I get to this center here, uh, just to kind of lock, lock this corner in place here. Yeah, I think the roads might be getting bad today. Our, our driveway, our, our little sidewalk by our driveway got bad today because it, it warmed up a little bit, like warmed up to like the 20s um, earlier, it seemed. So there was some melt that, you know, immediately froze. I think that was yesterday, actually, that it got a little bit warmer. Today it was colder again. So any teeny tiny melt from friction that happened uh, yesterday kind of froze again into some ice. Ugh, but I think, I think we're supposed to get more snow this weekend. <laughs> Oh, I don't know how we can have more snow. I guess there's uh, some record. I was listening to the news today. It sounds like in some small towns, there are other towns in in um, Minnesota here, there was, they have hit their record snowfall for uh, February. <laughs> and uh, February is not done yet. I do find this super duper relaxing. This this applique where we're just stitching it on, like this needle, this fake. It's kind of it's fake needle turn applique. I call it I call it fake needle turn applique. Um, but I love uh, and I call it fake because with needle turn applique, you know how this is tucked under with with true pure needle turn. I would be tucking it under as I go. So I would take my needle, tuck it under, put a stitch down tuck under the next point and put another stitch down. We kind of cheated 
by gluing it and folding it over that template piece. But yeah, for real needle turn, we would have just drawn that shape on here and tucked it under until it hit our drawn shape. But I love like pre-doing the needle turn where it's all tucked under for us already. Uh, the result is the same. Like the result looks just like needle turn applique, but I don't have to worry about tucking things under and I can just zen out and just totally stitch and I, I really find it relaxing, this applique. And I, I was not expecting that, um, to find it as relaxing as I do. That was a little discovery from the last, the last uh, Splendid Sampler. They're like, ooh, now that I, I'm getting a hang of this needle turn, I'm really kind of liking it. And we are almost done with uh, this first row. So we'll prep the next row. Maybe we'll prep all the rest of the rows. Did you do real needle turn applique? Um, I, I missed, oh, uh, let me scroll up. Sorry, you guys. Did you do real needle turn applique with the pineapple block? Ooh, um, Jane, I am not, I don't remember. Did we do real? Needle turn? Oh, we did. We did. We, um, let me find it again. It's, I have my pile of blocks right here. Maybe that'll trigger it. I think we did. We did at least for the inside bits. <laughs> you guys here, I got my stack of finished, finished blocks. I think next week we'll start getting this, doing um, more of the quilt as you go again. I got a plethora, a surplus of blocks here. It's time to get quilting again. Where the heck is that pineapple one, though? We didn't put that in anything yet. What? Where did it go? Maybe I have some in my binder still. Oh, maybe we did sew it in. Oh, yeah, you know what I did? I actually I sewed it into a block already. We just haven't quilted the block. Yeah, I think we did real needle turn for the inside of the little nubbins, but that was kind of like reverse applique needle turn. So we were tucking it under, real, uh, looking at an inside part of a, of a shape instead of the outside, like we're going on the outside. Um, and uh, let's see, did we do needle turn for the outside? You know what I think we did? I think we did tuck it as we as we went yeah you know what we did yes so the pineapple block it's coming back to me now uh, the pineapple block one yes we did do like pure needle turn uh, needle turn applique where we uh, where we tucked it under as we went Oh, you're still fighting with that pineapple. So I did, I did do that one already. So that video should be up. I do have, I do have a couple tricks for doing inside points and outer points and stuff and uh, like approaching curves and stuff. So if you're having trouble doing like straight needle turn applique uh, on that, on the pineapple block, Jane, um, check out the videos I have for it. Uh, it should be up there. But yeah, I, I go through a few of my little tips for, for like the straight, pure uh, needle turn. Oh no, you had to redo yours, Gretchen. All right, I think that's gonna be my last stitch on these. I'm gonna just go around this last area again. Yeah, the pineapple did turn out really cute though. That was a challenge. That was a long, that was another one that had a lot of, that was like a, a, an exercise in patience, that one again too. Just uh, consistency and patience. Oh. The more I have to do things that require consistency and patience, uh, the more I think that that is like life. <laughs> a life is an exercise and consistency and and patience and reflection basically i think 
a combo of those things together. All right. This guy is done. Let's snip it. All right. So I'll put the needle back in Zeb so I don't lose it. Here is our first row. So I uh, notice I'm not stitching any of this bottom part on. This is going to get covered up by the next row. So I don't have to worry about that at all right now. I just stitched uh, this top row on and it's looking adorable. All right. So let's move on to our next row here. Oh, patience is an understatement for, for the pineapple block. <laughs> you, Jane, you think you've aged two to three years on that? Yeah, I, I, I had a few times just remind myself to be patient on that one as well. <laughs> All right, so since I stitched this row on already, I have three free templates to use. Um, you know, I, I drew enough on here on my postcard here um, for a row of four and a row of um, the last row of three. But since I have a couple from the last row, I can actually reuse these. So we're going to get started. I am going to have to cut out a few more though, four to finish this, but let's, let's just go on in one at a time. So, all right, in order from left to right, top to bottom row. So I got to keep this in order here. So I'm going to start with this one. All right, so what I'm going to do is flip it over, take a template piece, and I'm going to put a dab of glue. Oh, here's my first my first uh, template. I think I glued the template onto here and then trimmed it and then traced it a bunch of times from this one. But all right, I'm going to just put a dab of glue right in the center here, just temporarily. Just long enough so I can trim, um, trim a seam allowance around there. Let me grab a scissors, use my giant uh, dressmaker scissors. So, so there, it's stuck on there. All I'm gonna do is trim to about a quarter inch, maybe a hair bigger than a quarter inch. All right, just getting like the gesture of it down. Okay, there we go. So this is my first one. You know what, I'm gonna glue this down right away too. So to finish this template, what I'm gonna do is get my glue stick out and I'm gonna glue just a little ways at the beginning here and I'm gonna fold just little by little I'm going to push, I'm pushing my finger right up against the edge and then kind of folding my figure, finger over. And that's what's going to give us our nice clean edge. So let's glue a little bit more. So you don't want to just fold and fold. You want to push up against the edge to get that real good sharp edge. And I'm only gluing a little by little because by the time I get get over there, that glue's going to be dry. But the smaller little folds, smaller little time bits you fold over, the better, the less like choppy your curve is going to be. Oh, that's a good idea. Number the back of the templates. We're going to do that. It's a great idea. All right. So this is going to be number one. I need a pencil. Here we go. Let's call this 1A. We're going to make rows A and B here. This is 1A. So this would be tucked in the side right there. Okay. This is going to be, I think I did, I think what I did is I did kind of like a tan row and then I did like a bright yellow row and then another tan row, if I remember correctly. Okay, and actually now, remember I glued that little bit down right in the center. I can release that now. I don't need that. There, there. Now it's now it's not stuck down there anymore. Before it gets stuck there forever. Okay, second one. Dab of glue. Oops, but let's put it on the side. Okay. 
Okay, again, I'm just doing this so it's easier to trim. To that quarter inch or so. I think once we have these pieces made, it's not going to take too much longer to finish this. It didn't take all that long for us to sew, to applicate those first three clamshells on, I don't think. So I'm thinking, I'm just like planning my week a little bit. I, I think if we work on this on Monday, we might get it done on Monday. If we can prep all the pieces tonight yet, and then um, stitch them on on Monday, we might be in good shape. Oh my gosh, your applique needle just broke in your hand. Oh my gosh, Gretchen. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. That's not fun. Okay, this is going to be a two. A two. I didn't want to draw on the little hedgy there. Boop. Okay. Another cute little yellow piece. Here we go. Fuzz. Oops, I forgot to release that glue dot on the last one. Let's go back. Just want to scrape. There we go. See, that's where the glue was. I want to just scrape that off. There we go. Now it's not now it's not stuck anymore. Okay. Trim. Oop, got a little close there. All right. I think that's good. So after this one, though, I'm, I'm out of template pieces, so I'm going to have to cut a few more. So I'll take a little bit of time here yet. Maybe we won't quite get these template pieces done. There we are. Release that glue from the front. And all this glue is washable, so once this goes through the, the wash for the first time, we'll be good to go. Okay, so here's, here's what this is going to look like so far. Wow, those yellows are so bright compared to the tans, but I think that's why it's going to be fun, and it brings in some of the yellow from, from the flowers here. Ah, it's cute. Okay. So I got four left here, one for the row of four, and then the three at the bottom. Ooh, they're pretty florally and decorative. Okay, so I need four more uh, little templates. So let's just trim those quick. I got, a, I got a paper scissors here now. First, I'm gonna just kind of trim around them. It's easier to cut them out one at a time, I think. All right. So I do really want to get this edge nice because this is that edge that I'm putting, I'm pushing the fabric right up against. So I don't want any like little bumps in here because those bumps will show up on my fabric. I suppose I can adjust those bumps once we stitch it down too, but you know, I try and at this stage get a nice edge here. There we go. These edges don't matter quite as much because we're not, folding any fabric um, over them at all. They're more so we know how much fabric to trim. Okay, one. Oh, 
Oh, I really want to get these done, but we're getting, it's getting to be late already here. Right, this edge doesn't matter so much. It's this rounded edge here. Now I'm moving the paper and out the scissors. <laughs> that was that aha moment from kindergarten that I remember. Okay. Two, two more. Yep, I'm cutting right on the line, Tracy. I suppose if I was smarter, I would cut a hair on the inside of the line because we do have to adjust for the thickness of the fabric. So really I should be kind of trimming it a, a hair in. And that's probably why my first row was a little too big. It's probably because I wasn't thinking about the thickness of the fabric. So I will try and trim a little bit more of the line off as I go here. I don't want it to feel different than the other ones, but I think we'll in general be okay yet. Okay. And one more. Oops, sorry about that. Last one. And the thing is when you trace the templates onto to the paper, you're probably adding a little extra too because your pencil isn't gonna get right up against that. Like it's, it's gonna be a, a, on the outside of the template when you trace it. So trimming a hair more than you need to here is probably a good idea. All right. Oh, I don't, I don't think I labeled that last one um, A3. Let's do that, yeah, A3. Especially since we're gonna have a whole weekend uh, in between work now and working on this again. So yeah, labeling these is good. All right, let's get, ooh, cute, fun. <laughs> let's keep going here. We got the templates cut out. Let's try and finish up prepping these pieces. All right, where'd my, here it is. Lost my glue stick for a sec there. All right, putting that dab of glue down. We could actually do all four at once here. Uh, maybe not. I just want to, I want to leave, I want to make sure that I keep my order. So I was going to lay all four of them out and do them all at once, but um, I got scared that I would mix them up. Scissors, here you are. So we'll do it one at a time still. I'd rather go one at a time than get them out of order. I suppose it doesn't matter, but still. I did all that planning to write that note earlier. I should at least honor honor old self with the, you know, and put them in the order that uh, was on that note. Oh yeah, I think that book is called Everything I Learned I Learned in Kindergarten or something like that. Or Everything I Know I Learned in Kindergarten. I have not read that, but yes, that is a book. Everything I know I learned in kindergarten, maybe. All right, stick it down. Just kind of finger pressing this last little part down. Okay, let's label this. This is a four. Okay, and then last three, and then we'll take a look at this. Ran out of this flower fabric, I think. It's funny seeing it again. <laughs> I learned my cutting skills in, in kindergarten. <laughs> 
the importance of cutting skills. Everything I needed to know I learned in kid in kindergarten. There you go, Valerie. That's it. I have three scissors by me and I can't ever find, can't find this one. I think this is my favorite fabric scissors, so any chance I can get to use it, it's okay with me. Okay. Uh, let's fold him over. This glue feels like it's getting kind of gloopy and globby, but it'll still work. Oh, your youngest child failed cutting in kindergarten. Oh my gosh, that should not be judged. <laughs> I just remember cutting something out. I don't know what I was cutting out or whatever, but I remember the teacher saying to me, move the paper, not the scissors. And I'm like, move the paper, not the scissors. That's genius. <laughs> That's like my... In her, in, her kin, in her kindergarten monologue there. <laughs> All right, cute. Cute little flowers. All right, two more and then we're done. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't label this one either. Let's, this is B1, so new row. Come on, glue. Ooh, wow, that glue doesn't want to come off. There we go. Yep, Dorothy, I sure do. I uh, have a designated scissors for cutting paper versus fabric. And the reason for that is, is uh, fabric scissors are typically much, much sharper uh, than, than uh, paper scissors. And with a paper scissors, you can have like a pretty not sharp scissors and still cut through paper. And, oop, this, this got unglued already. I cut it already. But like with, uh, if you cut a, if you cut paper with a fabric scissors, um, it can dull the fabric scissors. And it is not fun cutting through fabric with a dull scissors. So that's why, that's why people get like up in arms about um, using the fabric scissors to cut paper. That's just a big no-no. It's because it dulls the um, it dulls the blade, and fabric scissors are not usually inexpensive. <laughs> They're usually a little fancier and heftier than a paper scissors, so you don't want anything dulling it. I mean, you can get it. Uh, you can get it. Get scissors sharpened. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna do that soon. I have just a whole pile of fabric scissors from over the years that totally need to be sharpened. And I learned recently of a place in town that sharpens um, scissors. I mean, they sharpen knives, so it's like a knife and scissors sharpening place uh, near us. And I'm gonna bring a whole pile of them over there, I think, and have them do the whole lot of them. But yeah, there's definitely some fabric scissors I don't use anymore um, that, that I have. And I don't use them just because they're just not sharp. That's a good question, Jane. I have not, I've done a little research on it. It's been a while, but I have not found like something that you can buy to sharpen scissors really nicely, like something for fabric scissors or whatever. Um, so I I'm, don't know if there's anything on the market for that. 
I know they have stuff like that for rotary cutter blades, but I have not had good luck with those either. I, I have a one thing to sharpen rotary cutter blades where you just um, like roll it down this groove and it's supposed to sharpen it and ugh, I don't think that did a dang thing. So I don't know. I haven't had luck with that at all. Um, from, my, from what I hear, it's still you bring them in to get professionally sharpened from a person. And you know, there is... There's reasons for that too, getting it sharpened by a professional because different scissors and different utensils like a like a knife versus a scissors, the angle at which it's sharpened is not always the same with every device. So, um, you know, a professional kind of needs to look at that and figure that out so they know what what angle to sharpen at. So it's a little bit more, I think, of an art form than than what you'd think. You have a sharpener for knives that works well. Oh, it, it didn't work for the scissors. I can't read. I can't read the whole comment here. But yeah, I think it's. Oh, you paid only five dollars a pair to get professionally sharpened. Yeah, that's awesome, Gina. So that's. I think that's. I'm hoping that's kind of what this turns out being. This guy in town that that I just um, a friend told me about. All right. Oh my gosh. Look at it, you guys. So those are are the other clamshells. So obviously I don't have them attached yet, but this is where they would live and they are cute. Actually a little higher. So it would go right where the bump, where the inside point, that's where the next, the next one kind of would lie. So let's see, kind of be tucked in higher. I think closer to, to closer to that I think there we go oh it's gonna be pretty I, I didn't realize I did a lot of really decorative ones up front you know what I don't think I labeled any of these b1 why did it did I label this one no b3 I suppose we'd find it out just because it's the last one there okay so uh, I think most likely we will pick this up again on Monday and uh, uh, yeah, so first we have to tack the rows together and these at these two points and then at these three points and then we'll stitch them down just like what we did with, with these top ones. And I think that went fast and easy. Yay, I love it. All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it a Friday. All right, hello. Thanks again, you guys, for uh, joining me tonight here. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube there and uh, you can see how we stitched it down or hear, hear my critique of Alita Battle Angel somewhere. <laughs> anyway, thanks again uh, for joining me tonight. I always have a great time chit-chatting with you here uh, and I will see you um, tomorrow. Oh, not, on, not tomorrow, on um, Monday. Terry, did I release the last one? I did not. So here, I'm, I'm going in with uh, the stiletto here. Just popping out that glue. You're right. I don't want that. I don't want that stuck there. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> All right. Have a great evening and have a great weekend, you guys. Good night.